This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to the end of the video for some free stuff. I think we should break up. Boom, a shock wave hits you. This is it, it's over. You could feel it for a while now, but truly this was it. But oddly enough, instead of retaliation, you feel relief. Actually, I agree. I think the spark had faded and that's okay. The relationship had run its course and provided what it could for both of your lives, leaving you with nothing but respect and admiration for someone you shared so many great memories with. Even though things are ending, you're genuinely glad you were someone you had in your life. I hope we can still be friends though. Are you crazy? I want to be friends with you. <sighs> yeah, if if I haven't made it abundantly clear, I don't think staying friends with your ex is the brightest, like the brightest idea for real. At the very least, right after you break up. You don't think they can be friends at all? What? Oh, oh you must not understand what I was saying. Right after you break up. Sure, why not? Immediately. Okay. I don't think you hear me. Frame one. Yeah. Really? What is wrong with you people? I'm not tripping here. I don't, I don't think you're getting me. I'm not talking about friends either. That the most you see of each other is the second second intervals on your Instagram story. No, no, no. I mean a bona fide, you're talking, you're texting, you're eating out, not that kind friends. Sure, it's not impossible. Do you think it is? Honestly, honestly, yeah, I do. Because A, I think you need time away from your former partner so any lingering feelings can go away completely because it's genuinely hard to let go of someone and grow if they are always like there you know and i know that because it's a proven fact okay i know something's wrong because you're quoting articles within the first two minutes of the video are you okay and b i feel like historically being actually really but for real though platonic friends with the person you were smashing last week leads to some less than positive relationships. And this is also historically true. One 2000 study found that friendships between exes were more likely to have negative qualities and less likely to have positive ones than cross-sex platonic friendship. Curtis, what are you getting at? So, after all this evidence, all that solid reasoning, why? Why? Oh my God. Frame one, y'all? One. Frame one, come on, y'all. You kidding me? <sighs> Literally, the stats agree with me. I truly, genuinely don't understand you people. I mean, there's gotta be at least some truth if both polls say. And that's the point of this video. Where is it at though? No. So today I'm going to explore why people make the unusually poor decision to become friends with their ex right after a breakup. AKA why all of you are crazy people, but that didn't look as good in the title. Now, a lot of y'all are probably thinking I was on my whole fuck my ex vibes because we probably had some ugly, disgusting, visceral end to our relationship. And that was correct. But the initial breakup wasn't because we hated each other. In fact, it initially ended pretty amicably, to be honest. The reason I was saying fuck her after we broke up is because I was fuck her after we broke up. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, not the, not the. Yeah. As we got into the friends phase, things got like a bit more complicated to the point where she asked to spend the night, but not in a weird way like kids do for sleepovers. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. That's fine. Nothing can go wrong. It will be completely. F okay, I don't know about you, but that is not what I did at my sleepovers as a kid. Here, let me run y'all to play by play of the three wildest years of my life. So we start out trying to be friends. We accidentally smash every once in a while. So now when we see the other talking to someone else, we get jealous, which leads us trying to work things out until one night here doing it with my friends. So I smash someone else in retaliation, leading to an STD scare, which brought her back into my life as a most crush, leading us to once again becoming friends with benefits until she gives me an STD scare, which led to us hating each other, but still wanting to smash. So I had to sneak around in my basement like the underground world just so we could keep smashing, and then I kick her out of my room. <sighs> and then there was one more STD scare. So. Okay, pause. Yeah. Don't take what I'm about to say offensively. You're about to say the most Defensive thing, huh? I am. <sighs> Fuck it, let her rip. If this is the grounds for your argument, you're definitely projecting right now, you.
petri dish of a man. Ouch. That telenovela you just told is not common in any stretch of the word. Okay, yeah, sure, but like... Still frame one, though. You got four STD scares frame one. You have no room to talk. Gotcha. Kurt, some people can just break up and stay friends after their breakup. Not everyone is as emotionally irresponsible as you. And if I heard you right, not everyone sneaks girls to their room through the basement like Harriet Tubman. Look, all right, you're right. I do think some people can be friends right out the gate. It's true. Mm -hmm. And yes, you're right, all right? My emotional control, if it was horsepower, would be like three human legs three human legs sure but come on even if we forget my personal experience despite the data these graphs adding up to the majority of people thinking it's okay to be friends with your ex immediately is insane i mean i guess frame what bro oh my god to contextualize it, there are some certain prerequisite bars that need to be cleared before you can be friends with your ex. Bar one, both people in the end of a relationship should truly feel nothing, nada for each other, or at least so little that the difference was negligible, romantic. And if you can't jump over that one and you still feel the need to get into the wondrous, splendid wonderland that is just being friends. Number two, both parties must have enough control over their emotions that if they hang out in person and or see the other acting romantically with someone else, it won't affect them emotionally. Like if it's like your new relationship with your ex as like a relationship you have with donating a cool t-shirt. Maybe it's too big or maybe it shrank in the wash or something, but you know y'all don't fit together anymore and it's time to move on and pass it on. You gotta be okay with the idea of dropping in that little Goodwill drop box. And despite your love and affection and attraction for this t-shirt, you won't be too pressed if you see someone else with it or f***ing it. And I don't think that happens often. Like sure it happens, but enough for this though? Frame one. Okay with the frames, I get it. But seriously, why do people think it's okay? Well, even when it's not amicable, I'm sure there's hundreds of reasons why exes stay friends. Some of them are even good reasons. People are complicated. Complicated these nuts, but I good it. There are literally only four reasons. Oh, here we go again. Who's been teaching you about Google Scholar? In fact, I am so confident. How about this? If even one of these reasons are good and Friendships based off those reasons turn out positively more often than not. I will shut up and admit I'm wrong. Ooh, the only thing I ever want. Deal. But you might end up surprised. Surprise these nuts, bitch. I got it. I am going to celebrate so hard as soon as you're wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a study was done back in 2017 where 288 adults ages 18 to 62 were surveyed about why they became friends with their ex after their breakup. Frame one. Frame one. And apparently there are four key motivations for couples wanting to stay friends. And the first one is, drum roll, get a drum roll. Unresolved romantic desire. I'm off to a fantastic start. This is exactly what it sounds like. You stay friends because of the three C's. You still want companionship, you still want what could have been, and you still want coochie. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, if you will. I feel like I don't have to explain why this is bad. Uh, in fact, I definitely don't have to because the study does it for me. According to this, most relationships that end with this route reportably end negatively. Who would have guessed? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, baby. Shut the f up, Harriet Tubman. This was literally one of yours. Sorry, I couldn't hear you over me being right. I had moving, moving on. Now that I'm on a roll, let's keep it going. Next up, the number two reason is, drum roll, civility. I feel like the drum roll isn't as cool when it's not self-explanatory. Whatever, it's fine. According to study, basically this means staying friends to be polite. Retroactively making the energy of ending a three-year relationship the same as remembering to take off your shoes when you enter someone's apartment. Hold on a second. Civility also covers not wanting to hurt an ex-partner's feelings to avoid confrontation and staying friends out of guilt for breaking up with them. Which are, while, yeah, more understandable than wanting the Holy Spirit, still bad but understandable subjectively sure it might be hard to end things completely but sometimes they need to end so you both can heal i said that earlier you need time away and you're throwing this competition away because i bet this is another one for me but see me be proven right again what are the usual outcomes of these relationships neutral what the f does neutral mean? I think it means there was a fairly even amount of negative and positive outcomes. What the, but I... Where did you get... No celebrating yet. You are not right yet. I, I'm not wrong yet. We're moving on, I, I guess. Uh, next up is, is number three. 
Security. Yeah, all right, yeah, the drum roll definitely isn't as cool. If it isn't so, don't don't do the drum roll for the night. This means staying friends to not lose the ex partner's emotional support, advice, or trust. Basically saying, I trust you and I want you to remain in my life as a confidant and supportive presence. Also making you a very weak individual. Does it say that? It does not say that. Well, it's true. Isn't this also another reason why you stayed with your ex? But again, that, that's the point. I was in a very bad place. I didn't have a lot of people around and well, she was my best friend. I didn't want to lose her. And when we tried to stay friends, I couldn't separate the two. And I feel like most people can't. Well, everyone isn't you. Some people might. All it takes is the ability to make better emotional decisions, Harriet. Okay, you gonna stop with the Harriets right now? And let's, come on, let's be real. There's no way this turns out healthy. Let's just see that I'm right and move on. How? how? Literally how? Did you contact Rebecca L. Griffith from University of Kansas and, and, and flood the results or something? Nope. Emotionally, how can this type of relationship end positively? Emotion, these nuts, bitch, everyone isn't you. Was I actually tripping? Because I mean, like, that couldn't work, right? Like, sure, you might be in a tough place, but how can you separate it? Everyone isn't you. <sighs> Maybe. Just... Okay, um, let's just, what's, what's the last one? Uh, number four. Yo, quit, quit with the, stop with the stupid drum roll, please. Stop. Practicality, which is staying friends to avoid losing the ex-partner's financial support, the social status, and standing associated with the relationship, or because you have a child together or shared possessions. So, basically, you work together or go to school together, and thus, we should stay on good terms to minimize drama. All right, well, I kind of get this point. I guess being able to manage relationships is important. Sometimes you're dependent on one another, and I don't know if it means you should be friends, but at the very least cordial, I get it. Like if you dated within your friend group, when you break up, the whole group gets thrown into whack. I'm sure it's hard to enjoy your time with the homies if the homies were f***ing each other and don't like each other anymore. In fact, according to the same study, this reason is very common amongst members of the LGBTQ community, which makes sense because in that situation, it's not uncommon to date within your friend group, which can be rough when it doubles as your community and safe space. When those relationships end, if you're not friends anymore, who do you have left that can relate to you? It can lead to you having no community anymore. It's not practical. Oh, I'm afraid to ask, but so how often do these work out? Uh, I am confused, very confused, but I guess I get it. All right, overall, I think maybe this is what everyone in that poll was talking about. And maybe I'm just not the kind of guy who can act all buddy buddy with someone who I gave my entire heart to. I don't know, I feel like that stuff takes time, at least for me. And even if the majority of people don't feel like I do, I do know some people might feel the same. But. <sighs> I guess it depends on how things ended and who you are. And I guess I'm just not that guy, but some people can be. I think it all comes down to knowing your emotional limits and contextualizing when it's okay to be friends with your ex. I mean, I don't understand it at all. Everyone's different and there are some circumstances that make it possible, both internal and external. And I guess I know mine. So maybe it is okay to stay friends with your ex. Frame one. Frame one. Wow, what a change. But it does depend on who you are. Yo, are you gonna stop? Now, staying friends with your ex might not work for everyone, but you know what can? A lifelong relationship with this video sponsor, Skillshare. Trust me, if I could get in a relationship with the website, uh, this would be it. All right, so let me tell you why getting Skillshare is as good, if not better, than getting back with your ex-partner. See, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their own creativity and learn new skills. Your ex is just some person, f***ing lame. They didn't want you to invest in yourself and your personal growth, but you know what will? Like a f***ing Skillshare. Am I allowed to cuss this much, y'all? Is that cool? Exes lie, charge phone, and eat hot chip. Skillshare does none of that. Skillshare teaches you things from photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more. Exes teaches you how unhealthy it is to cry at 3 a.m. Both decent lessons, but I, I'm more pressed to learn the other ones than that one. And trust me, I've been taking advantage of it because me personally, I've been getting into personal productivity, five exercises to make your big goals a reality by Kate Aarons. Because I've been trying to like get real personal with my 
productivity. It's in the title. And I've been spending too much time thinking about relationships if you can't tell so if you're a freelancer entrepreneur or someone getting over a breakup skillshare is for you do not worry i got the plug because the first 1000 people to click the link in the description will get their first month for free but you better act quick because once the first thousand click it it is gone like for good it's done so once again if you want skillshare free for your first month and to learn something new or you know show up your ex once again click the link in the description and start learning with skillshare today Thank you, Skillshare, for dating, sponsoring this video.